Hello, this is Lee from Data Harvest. Today I'm going to show you how our wireless Bluetooth motion sensor working with our EasySense 2 software for the SHM experiment, which, which is simple harmonic motion. So we've got a standard retort stand here, clamp, boss, uh, spring, set of masses, depends how strong your uh, spring is, obviously depends how many masses you need on there. I've got a coffee mat on the bottom, so when I place that on there, it picks it up nicely and we can show SHM up on the screen. So all our Bluetooth sensors are USB and Bluetooth. So USB obviously plugs into there. That'll connect to your laptops quite happily if you want to go direct. But if I hold this button down on the front for a couple of seconds, I've now got, that should start to flash. There we go, I didn't hold it long enough, there we go. So we're now flashing on the front, so that's now broadcasting Bluetooth. It's as easy as that. Uh, on the front, there's a little white box which has six digits in it. They are always unique numbers to the sensor you are using. Because it's now broadcasting Bluetooth, uh, it will broadcast it, this is a motion sensor, it will say motion, and then the six digit afterwards when we go into the EasySense 2 software. And the EasySense 2 software does not pick up any other Bluetooth devices apart from Data Harvest. Otherwise you'll get an awfully long list. So, we go and open the EasySense 2 software. <clears throat> Just takes a couple of seconds. Now it doesn't auto connect. As I said, you just have to go and see which one you want. So I go to devices at the top. Uh, someone's using Bluetooth in the building as well still. So if we go and click on the motion sensors, that's 644. Yeah, just to make sure there's not more than one on in the building at the moment. So we're now connected. There's a couple of ranges you can use on here. You can have six meters or 1.5. We're just gonna do 1.5 to start. We could do time and temperature. They're also built into it as well. Uh, time is used for when you want to, you can do speed of sound off a solid. So you can, it bounces back, <clears throat> you know the time, you know the distance, you can divide it by two and you can work out the speed of sound as well. Right, so I'm just going to start this bouncing. Now don't let it bounce closer than 15 centimetres because if you do, it echoes back off itself and won't actually take the reading. So we now put that in there and there you go, that's working nicely. So we just go for oh, eight, ten seconds, should be plenty. We now click stop and we are done. So, got a nice SHM on the screen at the moment. <clears throat> what we can do with this now is we can now do some maths and get the velocity of that, do some further maths, and because we have the velocity, we can then get the acceleration. Just stop that bouncing as well. There we go. Now, before we do that, I am just going to smooth the data very slightly. It looked quite smooth, but just to make the formula look nicer as, as we go through. So, we now click on calculate. So we are going to have this one, we're going to call it velocity, I won't write the whole name. The units, ms. The formula I need for this is dx divided by dt. So we can go down and click on there. And we're going from the distance data, so that's fine as well. We now click save and we have velocity on the screen. Now we've got the velocity, as I said a moment ago, we can now work out the acceleration. So I can now add a series on here, I can now add acceleration. This again is going to be ms. We now need the same formula as last time, dx divided by dt. So we go down to here, so that's fine. But this time, instead of going from the distance data, we're going to go from the velocity data. So we can now go onto the velocity, we can now save that, and we have that on the screen. Now the good thing with our software is we can now turn off some of the ones we don't want. So I can turn off the velocity on the screen, Go and click on values. And as you can see, we can go to here. Let's go to a peak one, there we go. You can see they are dead opposite, which is exactly as you should show it. So SHM is incredibly easy to use. The tips to remember again, don't go closer than about 15 centimeters and get a nice smooth swing on it. If it is a little juddered, just use smooth a couple of times before you do your calculations for velocity and acceleration. We have lots more videos of how to use our Bluetooth sensors on our secondary academy. Uh, they split into three sections. One is how to use the Bluetooth sensors. The second section is how to use the Bluetooth sensors with the experiments. And the third section is how to use the EasySense 2 software. All the information can be found on data-harvest.co.uk. As I said, through the secondary academy, we'll take you to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you want further information, please contact us sales at data-harvest.co.uk. Thank you.